So let's look at the part B of Danko, which is a continuation of the previous video. In the last video, we solved the A part of the question, which was the NPV at the nominal terms. Now we want to solve NPV in real terms, which is what the question B requires us to do. Now, what we have to do is to look at the cash flows in real terms. And fortunately for us, if you look at the questions we've been looking at, the sales figure, the cost figures, this, the question tells us, say, look at it, this paragraph, say, this forecast uh, before taking account of general inflation. So that shows that the cash flows we have here are both in real terms, both sales and cost. So we can just put that in straight away. So we're going to have 1, 250, 2570. 6890 and 4530. So we have the revenue, which is our sales figure. Then the cost remains as that as well. We don't need to adjust for any inflation because the figures are already before taking into consideration inflation. So they are in real terms, no adjustment. And 1750. And you can see why the marks for this question is just five marks, unlike the previous one we did. Oops. The, f the previous one we did was 10 marks. Yeah, this one. Yeah, so this one is pretty easy. Profit before tax. So we need to take that at revenue minus cost. So we have 750. Yeah, zero is zero. 750, 1570. 4390 and 2780. At 30%, we're going to calculate our tax. Remember, tax is paid in areas. So there is no tax for year zero and year one because the first tax will happen in year one, but it's going to be paid in areas. So that's 30% of 750, and that is 225, but we paid in year two because tax is paid in areas. and. 1570 times 30 percent that's 471 like that i have 1317 and 2780 and 30 percent is 830 Awesome. Good. So, now, what is profit after tax? This is zero. That's profit for tax minus tax. And this is 750. Then 1570 minus 225. That's 1345. Then 4390 minus 471. That's 3919 and 2780 minus 1317 and that's 1463 and this comes down as 834 yeah now initial investment which is our initial outlay remains 2 million and that will happen immediately that's year zero and it's negative because it's cash outflow. The working capital will be different, so let's make that our uh, working this time around. Uh, that will be working one because we've not done any workings here. So I'll make that working one. So we didn't do any workings here. We didn't do any workings here, just like we did before. So our very first working is working capital. That's working one. Then tax will be working two. Those are the two things we'll be competing. And our tax will remain the same as we've done before because the tax is based on the current two million cost of equipment. So we'll plug that in from our previous computation. But for the working capital, remember the working capital requirement. Is 10% of revenue. So 
year one, year two, year three, year four. So 10% of revenue for each year is what we need at the beginning of each year as a working capital requirement. So what is the 10% of 1250 as um, 125? So beginning of year one, we need 125. Beginning of year two, we need 257. Yeah, and beginning of year three, we need 689. Beginning of year four, we need 453. But remember, this is not cash flow. This is just the inventory requirement. So in years, if you're going to start year one, January 1st with 125, we need to buy in, at the end of year zero. So that is why the cash flow is now minus 125 for year zero. And if we're going to start year two with 257, then we need to buy more because we only have 125 in year one. So we need to buy more. And then we need to buy 132 more in year one so that by the time we had it to what we start with, in total, we're going to have 257. Likewise, the same thing. To make 689 in year three, we need to buy 432 in year two. Yeah, and in order for us to start year four with 453, we had too much in year, at the end of year three, so we need to sell 236. So that was positive. And we're going to recover. Remember, I always want you to recover your working capital at the end of your investment. Please remember, never forget. So this is the working capital cash flow that we need to go and plot in our cash flow table. So you know that we are going to start with 125 negative because we need to buy its cash outflow. 132, 432. Then 236, that's the one we're selling. And we're going to sell the last one as well at the end of the project, 453. Then for tax, which is working too, is what we've done here before, if you remember. We did our tax. Yeah, it's the same calculation we did before, where we have the cost. We have the cost here. We have the depreciation. We have the net book value. And we have the tax credit here, which is the cash flow that we need. This is the part that we need, this part. And remember, we get tax credit by multiplying depreciation by 30% to get our capital allowance. So these are our capital allowance. Okay, so this same figure, 115 in year 1, 113 in year 2, and um, 84 in year 3, that's tax benefit, and uh, 253 in year 4. That is our tax benefit. But remember, because tax is paid in areas, we're going to post this tax one year later, right? So which means for the year one tax that was 150, we're only going to collect it in year two. So that is uh, 150 here, 113 here, and 84 here, then we'll get to 53 here. So, and total cash flow will be addition of this and this and this and this. So for the first year is 2125 negative. Then you have 618. I have 1063. And for year 3, we're going to have 3919 plus 236 plus 113. That gives four to six eight. You have two one four six three plus four five three plus eighty four. That gives two thousand. And lastly, you have negative five eight one. So that's our total cash flows. But the question is, what rate are we going to be using? The last time we used twelve percent, which is a nominal rate. And that is money rate. But because we are dealing with real cash flow, we cannot do that. So which means we have to calculate the real rate. And that's what we want to do. So I'm going to put working. Let's call that working three. Right. Let's call that working three. So we want to know what rate are we going to be using. Remember, because... We are dealing with money cash, sorry, we're dealing with real cash flow. 
the rule is that real cash flow must go with real rate. That is the real cost of capital. But the question has given us money cost of capital of 12%. So the nominal, which is the same thing as money, anytime you hear nominal rate, the same thing as money rate, money rate is 12%. But we're also lucky because we've been given, which will always be the case anyway, you always be given inflation rate. So for this question, inflation rate is 4.7%. Inflation rate is 4.7%. Then what comes Andy? International Fisher, the Fisher effect formula. That's what you use to calculate the real rate. Because using this formula, we know that this formula says that one plus money rate equals to one plus real rate that we want multiplied by one plus inflation rate. So we know real rates to be, we know money rate to be twelve percent uh, equals to one plus the real rate and one plus the four point seven percent. So one plus real rate equals to one point one two divided by one point zero four seven. And that equals to so one point one two divided by one point zero four seven. That equals to one point zero six nine seven. So real rate equals to one point zero six nine seven minus one. And real rate equals to zero point zero six nine seven which is you multiply this by one hundred that gives you six point nine seven percent so which is approximately seven percent so which means our real rate is equal to seven percent and that is what we need to use to discount our cash flow so the discount factor will be at seven percent so which means we we'll go to our present value table and we're going to work with this column, 7%. For year 0, is 1. Discount factor will always be 1. Always be 1. For year 1, is 0 0.935. Yeah, 0 0.935. Zero point eight seven three, zero point eight one six, and year four, zero point seven six three, and finally, zero point seven one three. So we need to calculate the PV, which is the cash flow. Multiply by the discount factor. And that will give us for year zero negative two one two five. This will be five seven eight nine two eight and four two six eight multiply by point eight one six. I'll give three four eight three three four eight three one five two six. And uh, negative 581 multiplied by 0.713 gives negative 414. And that is the PV. And NPV will be that. So negative 2125 plus 578 plus 928 plus 3483. Plus 1526 minus 414. And that gives positive 3976. Positive 3976. And that is our net present value. So, what does this mean? This is positive, unlike the previous one that we did, that was negative. No, the previous one was actually positive as well. Well, I think I need to check that out. Yeah, also positive. Right, so 
the NPV is positive and that is 3976. So, and what is the rule? The rule is that if NPV is positive, it is yes. It is yes. Yes means do the investment, do it. And you have to do it because the NPV is positive. That is the reason. Don't just say do the investment, but give the reason why you have to do the investment. And the reason why you have to do the investment is because the NPV is positive. And that is the question, the part B of the question. Um, the part C says, explain ways in which directors of Danco can be encouraged to achieve the objective of maximization of shareholders' worth. First of all, you need to understand what does it mean to maximize shareholders' worth. There are two things. It means you need to pay dividends to shareholders. So is that more dividends or increase the share price of the company? So is it that they get dividends or capital gains? That's how shareholders' wealth can be increased. And what do you need to do as a company to make sure that you achieve this? To make sure your directors are working in alignment with this. The major thing you have to do is to consider their remuneration or benefits such that their benefit aligns with the increase in share price. Right? So take for instance, you can say number one, align promotion. Because directors want to be promoted, yeah, with increase in share price. You can do that. You can also align bonus, bonus payment. To share price increase as well. Yeah, another thing you can do is to give share options. Because share options is when a company says, okay, we're going to give you some shares if you achieve a particular objective or if you are able to work in this company for so, so number of years. And in that case, directors end up becoming shareholders. And once directors are also exposed to increase in share price or dividend payment, definitely they will align with the shareholders' uh, aspiration. And that is actually called go congruence, which is a way to avoid what we call the principal and agents conflict. In section A and B, I spoke about agency theory and stewardship. I mean, that is the part that this question is trying to test. And that will be it for Danko. Remember, you can always ask your questions, like the videos, share with your friends, and turn on your, your, uh, turn on your notifications so that once the new videos are posted, you are able to get to know immediately. Thank you, and we'll connect again in the next video.